Hey everyone, I'm Madeline Sklar, host of the Social ROI Chat. We're in for a treat today. We have Managed Flitter CEO Kevin Garber here with us. Hey Kevin, how are you? Hey Madeline, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. And like you are not in Sydney today where you're normally at. Where are you coming in from? I attended a fantastic conference on the weekend that I tweeted out about called the um, Running Remote Conference, which is a conference for companies that have distributed teams, which of course is becoming increasingly popular. Uh, and there was a two-day conference in uh, wonderful Bali. So um, Managed Flitter was a partner um, of the conference. So I, I came over to Bali to attend the conference and to meet everyone else at the conference. And um, I'm still... I'm still in Bali, heading back to Australia soon. So time zones are a little bit, a little bit out of sync. And funnily enough, the the most common question at the conference uh, was everyone trying to share ideas how we deal with this time zone if- issue of time of uh, team members around the world in different time zones, and everyone had slightly different perspectives. But um, that's just um, you know one of the the challenges: the global business with team members everywhere with. Um, um, customers everywhere with marketing initiatives happening any times of the day. You just have to roll with it. But um, it's not not too bad. It got me up early for the day. Yeah. Well, we're so glad that you're here with us for the chat. We had a really great social ROI chat today. Zen Yinger was our guest. Unfortunately, she was not able to make the after chat. So we got you to come take her place. Uh, it was an interesting conversation. The topic was corporate leadership in the age of social media. Um, and so for those watching, if you missed the chat, I encourage you to go over to Twitter, put in the social ROI hashtag and check it out. Uh, what we're going to do since we have Kevin here with us, I thought we would ask Kevin the uh, the Ask Manage Flitter, CEO Manage Flitter question that we do each week on the chat and get Kevin's um, perspective and, and conversation out of this uh, from his tweet. So the question that Kevin, that we asked you today was as a CEO, how important has your personal social media presence been to the growth of Manage Flitter? You know, Madeline, one of the things about the modern world technology-wise is things move so fast. And uh, when Managed Flitter was started in 2010, I, um, no one knew about us. Uh, Twitter tools were new. Twitter was new. So Twitter was a great place to, to share um, what our product was about. It was a great place to co- connect with our customers. It was a great place for them to see uh, who we were, who was behind the product. In those days, there were a million small tw- little Twitter apps and Twitter tools. I'm sure you remember those days well. So um, building up my own accounts and, in fact, and, and in fact, using Twitter itself, um, you know, my own use of Twitter actually led to the creation of Managed Flutter because um, I started craving a tool. So there was this weird full circle that was done, um, that, that using Twitter led me to want to create a Twitter tool, which then, uh, you know, my own presence on Twitter and, of course, my, my co-founder at the time, James Peter, um, really led people to seeing who we were and how serious we were about building a product. A lot of products at the time were, were built by weekend developers and no, um, you know, no criticism of them, but we were, we were really serious about creating this product and going full guns with it. And I, I think our Twitter presence at the time and responding to everyone and discussing what was happening uh, was really testament to how serious we were about building and scaling this product. Yeah, it's such a great tool. I, I think it's so incredible when, when tools are built out of your own personal need, like you, you well, had a need that, and you filled it. There's a saying in the startup world, you know, of, of eating your own dog food. And um, it's when people, a lot of people ask me, you know, about starting a business. And I always say, try bring awareness to your day where you have a moment that's where you say, oh, I wish there was something that did this or an event that did that or an app that did that. Or, you know, it wouldn't be great if we could do this. And that's when you got to bring awareness and you know, if you're looking to start a business, that pain point. Um, I think in the tech industry, we're very guilty of coming up with cool stuff and then trying to work out what this cool stuff can do. And still, you know, if you look at things like drones and, you know, we've got this cool stuff and we're still trying to work out, well, you know, you know, what do we actually do with it? 
Um, so the easiest ways to find a pain point, I mean, there are other examples, for example, uh, of going the other way and creating, you know, cool stuff like, like YouTube and, and, and Facebook and then finding out the use cases. But that's a lot harder and a lot more risky. The pain point is always a good start. If you've got it, there's more very likely that someone else is having that exact same challenge. Absolutely, for sure. Um, when you were answering uh, or asked the, asked the CEO question, um, you had mentioned, I, you said, I personally dislike faceless companies. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, I guess... I guess it also probably comes down to personality types. I'm someone who's, uh, you know, I'm really, really driven by personal connections. I'm, I'm, I'm driven even in my day-to-day -day life. And sometimes even, even if you're sort of researching a hotel or a company and you're trying to find out who's behind all of this, um, is it a bigger company? Um, is it one smart young individual um, and you can't find that it's it's I'm, I always feel quite disappointed uh, and maybe it's maybe it's that subconscious desire we have as humans to to seek out that that human element I remember many many years ago Madeline as I mentioned before I grew up in South Africa and uh, we'd go on family holidays to this this uh, family friendly hotel on the coast Johannesburg was inland so it was a tradition a trek to the coast so all Johannesburg people every December and there was this chap there were two people at this hotel one was the maitre d at the restaurant and one was his name was an entertainment manager and three quarters of their job was just walking around engaging with the attendees of the um, hotel and it added so much to the hotel experience. They were the personality. They were the brand. And it was every year they would have a chat with the same people and they would get to know the people. And it's, and I'm pretty sure those two people drove a lot of return business. Um, so having a face and a personality behind a company has, has, is not new. I guess social just allows us. You look at Jack on Twitter. He's, he's regularly tweeting and, and sometimes even to, you know, non-famous people. And as I said, it disintermediates. It, 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 it yanks out the middle person in between. Um, so a faceless company, I don't know anyone that particularly prefers a faceless company. Um, I sort of, even dislike it if you email companies and they and they email back using you know just say a customer service rep or or team member. Um, it's a huge opportunity to to humanize everything. And um, yeah, I don't know. Are you are you the same? Do you do you prefer faces behind um, companies and organizations? I absolutely do, and that's what I love about social media. And I love how with Twitter. Uh, you can get someone like, like, you know, you mentioned Jack, you know, Jack at, at Twitter. Um, he really puts a face to the brand. So I feel like, okay, there's someone at Twitter that we all know because of the way he's active on social media and especially on Twitter, of course. And I think that goes such a long way in your example, talking about the hotel. I mean, yeah, you know, before social media, it's just, you know, having someone be that face of the brand is so important. I, I totally agree with you on all that. And if you look at, you know, the, the big, bold companies of our era, you know, Apple, of course, Steve Jobs was, was right. a giant. And even Tim Cook today is, is still got relatively high profile. Of course, mm -hmm. Elon Musk is, is the poster child of, of what's going on. And there's still people. We still, humans like to deal with humans. We like stories. We, um, you know, and I think there's still a lot of opportunities for companies where, um, you know, I'm thinking of just, for example, car companies where they faceless. I don't even know who the CEO of Toyota Australia or Global Toyota is. Great opportunity for someone smart, I guess. In Australia, we had the head of one of our largest banks was was a woman, Gail Kelly, and he ha she had some some nice profile and, and was always in the news. And I think it did, did great for um for that brand. So I think a lot of opportunities for small and larger companies. I think it's more difficult is if people are introverted and they don't like profile and particularly in the tech industry, um, you know, even a lot of our developers, ironically, um, they love the challenge of working on a Twitter product because there's a lot of data, there's a lot of complex infrastructure, but they, they're not social media people. They, they tend to be more introverted. So I think if a CEO um, is, is not, you know, particularly 
um, open and 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 uh, sort of a. And I wouldn't call myself an extrovert, but I'd ca call myself interested in human connection. Um, it may be more difficult to embed that a little bit in the DNA. Mark Zuckerberg as well. I mean, I give him credit for he posts on Facebook and he's he's quite transparent about what's going on and the, the challenges. And um, I think it I think it adds a lot and it adds a lot of trust. I mean, you compare that to some other big tech companies um, um, where I'm like I don't know. I'm thinking off the top of my head, Logitech. Right? They make some great products. Right. Who's the CEO? Is he or she commenting? Maybe I don't know, but they're a big company, and I, someone like me, should probably be hearing from them somehow every now and then about the industry and what's happening. So a lot of great opportunities still for for, for many many companies. I totally agree. Great point. I, I, you know, I I want to know who the person is behind a brand. I mean, I'm using Logitech right now, a great example, and so I have no idea who's behind the brand. So I, I agree. There's so much opportunity that's that's not being used. Uh, it's been great having you come on and share with us. We haven't had you on the after chat in a while, so it's always a treat when you're available to come on and and have the discussion with us. Any takeaways from today's chat before we go? Yeah, I mean, I mean, one thing is um, actually a previous podcast guest tweeted me. He must have seen that the tweets coming through. Steve Factor, he was one on one of our, you know, we've got our own podcast and uh, that Kate and I chat on every now, uh, sort of try to do it weekly. And he actually chimed in with an alternative perspective, which, and, uh, and I think we do need to always, you know, we also caught up in tech and social and we have such a passion for it. But as always, it's, it's, it's worthwhile being, you know, critical as well. And he uh, tweeted an alternative perspective. Unless you're trying to be famous or a public figure, there is zero upside to blogging or being on social media. But all the downsides, exposing data to hacks, snooping by employers, um, company strangers, and time-wasted debating nonsense, etc. cetera. Um, and I tweeted back to him saying that, um, you know, I don't think it's as simple as that. I think his point is valid, and you do have to be strategic on social. Um, but I, I certainly don't think it's as simple as that. We all learn so much on social. We all network so much on social. We've got so many customers that say to me, my product X or my company X wouldn't be successful if it wasn't for managed flood and we grew it on social, et cetera. But I think it is, it, it is actually, that's a whole other conversation is that, yes, social does have a cost. There's a cost to everything in life. And, I, and so I'm, I'm always happy to consider both sides. I don't think we need to only drink the Kool-Aid on our social media chats and these after chats. I think it's always worth considering all perspectives. Absolutely. Very, very wise. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. I really appreciate your time uh, with you all the way over halfway around the world in very early morning. So appreciate your time today. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, we'll be back again next week with another awesome social ROI chat. So thank you all for watching us today. We'll see you next thanks, time. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, Madeline. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.